Hey, how's everybody doing? Um, I chose to do my presentation on whole student or whole child education. Uh, the reason I became interested in this is because the principal I interviewed, uh, actually, I'd never heard of it before until I interviewed him for our interview. And he talked about this a lot. This is his philosophy of education is reaching the whole student or, you know, uh, teaching the whole student, whether it be uh, not just academically, but mentally, physically, spiritually, uh, all the different things that make up a, a whole person. So I really thought that was a pretty good philosophy to have. So I thought I figured what the heck everybody needs to know. Everybody needs to hear about it. Uh, this was actually developed by the uh, Association for Supervision and Curriculum Development and the Center for Disease Control. Uh, had a part in developing this as well because it has a lot to do with students health. Uh, it was launched in the spring of 2014 uh, and so I never really considered well I knew the aim of education was to make a better society or at least it ought to be uh, but some aims for education that I got from I, I, look, I looked this up and some aims for education are our health uh, you know you want people to be healthy and a lot of times you have to educate them to do that for them to be healthy uh, another aim for education is to for students to be able to command the fundamental processes uh, I didn't know what that was but I had to look that up and the fundamental processes when with regards to education are everything that you normally think of when you think of school reading writing math uh, reading writing arithmetic you know all those things uh, speaking all that different things um, and then so those are the fundamental processes for education uh, another aim for education ought to be uh, a worthy worthy home membership trying to make our students good members in their house right good members of their family and all that uh, we want to prepare them for work uh, another good another aim for education preparing them for uh, a vocation uh, being productive members of society, uh, being worthy with their leisure time. You, you know, that's something that we as teachers ought to, you know, be instilling in our students the, the fact that they need to use their time wisely, even their leisure time. And also, of course, they need, we, have to, we need to help them develop good character, uh, ethical character. Uh, let's see here. Here's another aim that I thought was uh, pretty interesting as an educator. Uh, an aim ought to be for your students, happiness. Uh, you as a teacher ought to do what you can to, to make them happy. Uh, and of course, as much as possible. They are, they are students, so. Uh, but great, great thinkers have associated happiness with such qualities as a rich intellectual life, rewarding human relationships, a love of home and place, Sound character, good parenting, spirituality, and a job that one loves. And as all of you have jobs and everything, I'm sure that you know that a good job that you like is goes a long way towards making you happy. Uh, we in, and as in the classroom, we incorporate this aim, the aim of happiness, uh, into education not by not only by helping our students understand the components of happiness but also by making classrooms genuinely happy places. So if you want to make happy students, then, you know, it goes a long way if you can make a happy classroom. And as teachers, like I said, our overall goal ought to be to improve society, I think, at least in the long, long term. Soci and, and a lot of times we think that society needs good workers and competent people. Uh, but we re really, we need more than good workers and people who know how to do a job. Uh, we need history and common sense tell us that a democratic society needs a whole lot more than that. Uh, it needs graduates who exhibit sound character. Uh, we need people who think critically as a society. Uh, we need people who have a good social conscience. Uh, we need members who are willing to make commitments. Uh, and we need members of society who are aware of global problems, not just local issues. Uh, local issues can be the immediate, but you know, there's problems going on in the world that, that needs help from all members of society, the world society. 
Uh, a democratic society needs an education system that helps sustain its democracy by developing thoughtful citizens who can make wise civic choices. Uh, life in a healthy democracy requires participation and students must begin to participate in the classroom, in our schools. Uh, working together in small groups can furnish such practice, uh, provided that the emphasis is consistently on working together, not on a formal group process or the final grade or the or whatever product they're working on. They need to concentrate more on working together, building those skills that they need to get along with other people, as opposed to just getting a good grade. All right. Democracy means more than voting and maintaining economic productivity. And life means more than making money and beating others to material goals. So we need to teach our students uh, that when we teach them. And so how do we reach the whole student? Well, there's a lot of different ways. There's a lot of good information out there on the internet about this. Uh, this is some, some ways. Reaching the whole student means treating them as individuals, not, not as a group, uh, you know, like a whole group of students. You know, talk to them as individuals. Uh, even when educators recognize that students are whole persons, the temptation arises to describe the whole in terms of collective parts and to make sure that every aspect, part, or attribute is somehow covered under the curriculum. Uh, although we cannot discard all the fragmented subjects in our present school system and start from scratch, we can and should ask all teachers to stretch their subjects to meet the needs and interests of the whole child. So we as educators need to show them that we are whole people ourselves. We're people. Uh, we can Another way we can reach the whole students is by meeting their needs. You all know the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Uh, you know, consider those when you teach or when you run your classroom, when you develop your rules and all that. Uh, again, modeling the whole person yourself is a good way to show your students how to be, how to reach your students as a whole person. Uh, let your students see you as a whole person. Uh, for example, when a math teacher recites a poem or reads a biogra biographical piece, or a science fiction story, when she points to the beauty or elegance of a particular result, when she pauses to discuss the social nature of scientific work, students may begin to see the connections and they begin to see a whole person at work. So they realize this, you know, that's not just the math teacher up there, that's a person who has interests and hobbies and fears and life, all those things that make up a, a person. Model, also another way is just modeling what it means to be a better person. Uh, make your, uh, practice things in your classroom like character and integrity and forgiveness. Uh, you know, if your student doesn't do his work like you ought to, you know, have a little forgiveness for him and have a little understanding about what they may be going through or whatever. Make your classroom a place where students learn the skills they need, but also know, or, but also learn how to be better individuals. Uh, you can do this by not only crafting lessons that address the standards, but affect the standard of life that the student is accustomed to. And as teachers, you need to remember that you do not teach a subject, you teach a child. That's it.